A service for Tuesday and Holy Week. Jesus said, And for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And the canticle, Herbs Fortitudinous, Isaiah 26. We have a strong city. Salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. Open ye the gates that the righteous nation which keepeth the truth may enter in. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Trust ye in the Lord for ever, for he, there our rock of ages is the Lord. The way of the just is uprightness. Thou, thou that art upright dost direct the path of the just. Yea, in the way of thy judgments, O Lord, have we waited for thee. The desire of our soul is to thy name, and to the remembrance of thee. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And the psalm appointed for today, Psalm 71, reading from verse 1. In you, O Lord, do I seek refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness deliver me and set me free. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be for me a stronghold to which I may ever resort. Send, send out to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of the evildoer and the oppressor, for you are my hope, O Lord. My confidence, even from my youth, upon you have I leaned from my birth. When you drew me from my mother's womb, my praise shall always be of you. I have become a portent to many, but you are my refuge and my strength. Let my mouth be full of your praise and your glory all the day long. Do not cast me away in the time of old age. Forsake me not when my strength fails me. For my enemies are talking against me, and those who lie in wait for my life take counsel together. They say, God has forsaken him. Pursue him and take him, because there is none to deliver him. O God, be not far from me. Come quickly to help me, O my God. 
Let those who are against me be put to shame and disgrace. Let those who seek to do me evil be covered with scorn and reproach. Well, as for me, I will hope continually and will praise you more and more. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Gospel reading is again, like yesterday, from the Gospel according to St John, chapter 12. Reading today from verse 20. Now there were those who went up to worship at the festival. Among them were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life will lose it. And those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, my father will honour. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out, and I... When I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The crowd answered him, We have heard from the law that the Messiah remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Jesus said to them, The light is with you for a little longer. Walk while you have the light, so that the darkness may not overtake you. If you walk in the darkness, you do not know where you are going. While you have the light, believe in the light, so that you may become children of light. Here ends our second, actually our only reading, our gospel reading for today. Jesus says in verse 31, John chapter 12. Now is the judgment of this world. Many people look forward into a projected time when there will be a day of judgment. But John's gospel is clear that sin is judged at this time. That as Christ bears the sins of the world, all sin is judged in his sacrifice, all sin is judged by him laying down his life on the cross. And the ruler of this world will be driven out, says the Lord. And I, when I am lifted up, will draw all people to myself. We do know that it is incumbent upon each of us to commit ourselves to God in Jesus Christ that we might have life and have it abundantly, and that we might know his presence as we walk in this world. But if you were to go through the New Testament with a highlighter, and if you don't like the thought of marking it on the page of a, a Bible, some people wouldn't like that thought, others wouldn't matter to them too much, but some people wouldn't like that thought, you can do it on the screen of your laptop or on your phone or whatever, and underline or highlight the number of times the New Testament uses the term or the word all or everyone. It's quite challenging. And it began to challenge me 
about 15, 16, 17 years ago. And in truth, it had been deep rooted within me for a long time. I didn't quite have it beaten out of me, but I did succumb to the pressure that was upon me all around to accept an exclusivist view of the gospel of Christ, an exclusionist view of salvation, that there are more out than in. And unless you have prayed a sinner's prayer, then God's grace does not have any efficacy for your soul, your heart, your mind, and your eternal well-being. And yet, Jesus says, now is the judgment of this world. When I am lifted up, I will draw all people to myself. Another great verse is one of those verses when we uh, reflect upon the resurrection this coming Sunday, and every Sunday in truth is a celebration of the resurrection. When we think of the words, for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Really challenging words those, if we've been brought up to accept and understand the gospel as being for those who have exclusively committed themselves to Christ. And that salvation is only available to those who have turned away from sin. It remains incumbent upon us to remit, repent of our sin and to turn to God that we might know the fullness of his forgiveness, grace and mercy in this life. But can it be that all is well in Christ? That all are forgiven. That he truly died for the sins of the whole world. For God so loved the whole cosmos. Is what we read in John chapter 3. In other words God so loved the whole of everything. In that same passage Jesus goes on to say that he did not come to condemn the world. Rather to redeem the world in his self-sacrificing love. If that is true, then what is the mission of the church? It is to bear testimony to the light of the love of God in the world. It is to say to the world, you are loved. You are loved now. You were loved back at the beginning of all things and before the beginning of all things. And you will be loved at the end of all things. And that love is perfectly shown in the person of Jesus Christ and perfectly demonstrated by him in his commitment to see through his dreadful calling to lay himself down and to bear our pain and sin in his body on the cross. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be dr driven out and I when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. Jesus has drawn us all to himself. We belong to the Father. We are forgiven by the love of the Son. Allow our lives to be touched by the Spirit of God and hear the word of the Lord. You are loved and always have been and always will be. Let us pray. A special collect for Tuesday in Holy Week. O God, who by the passion of your blessed Son made an instrument of shameful death to be for us the means of life, grant us so to glory in the cross of Christ that we may gladly suffer pain and loss for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who hatest nothing that thou hast made, and dost forgive the sins of all them that are penitent, create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may attain of thee the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same of thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance, to do always that is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray again today for the deliverance of God's love in our lives, the delivering power of God in the world. And we pray again for those who are suffering as a result of the COVID-19 virus. Heal them, O Lord, we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Deliver them out of their pain and suffering, that they might be restored to their loved ones, families and friends. Be with all those who would keep vigil and watch beside the beds of their loved ones, and yet cannot be with them. And may they have a sense of your presence at all times, and a peace which passes all earthly understanding. Bless, O Lord, those who are gifted and trained to bring healing gifts to bear upon the sick. And when they are wearied, when they are tired, restore them and build them up. We give thanks for our ambulance drivers. We give thanks for the janitors and cleaners in our hospitals. We give thanks for those who sterilize equipment, for those who run the stores and drive the vehicles, bringing stores to and from our hospitals, those who make the meals and keep the lights on, the heat running. We pray for each and every one. We pray, O Lord, for faith in a time of great darkness. May your light shine in our lives and strengthen us. Help us, O Lord, when we feel so helpless and removed from those who are in need. And be the strength and stay of all those who have been bereaved at this time. Be with them during this time of loneliness and this extreme time of removal from the reality of what has happened. Lord God, we do not understand why such pestilence has been visited upon us. We pray, O Lord, that soon we might see light at the end of the tunnel and good days ahead. So we commit and commend ourselves, O Lord, and our loved ones into your care and keeping. And we pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and has promised that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.